So in this video, I'm gonna explore the idea of simulating physics with Bolt Visual Scripting and the Unity Game Engine. Now a quick shout out to Adam Studio who's donated art assets from the Unity Asset Store for this uh, tutorial video. We're gonna be using the Planets Pack as well as the Cartoon Asteroids Pack as you can see on the screen in front of you. I'll include links to both those assets in the video description below. So let's talk a little bit about the basic idea of what we're gonna be doing here. The goal here is not to create perfect realism in our gravity simulation. The idea is to create gravitational attraction between objects that allows us to create a game. That's something that's playful and fun. Now, while we're going to be using physically accurate equations, there are some approximations and some lack of perfection with this, but that's okay because we're trying to make games, we're trying to make experiences, we're not trying to simulate the motion of the universe as a whole. So what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating objects that are sources of gravity, that are gonna be exerting forces uh, on other objects. We're also gonna be creating objects that are gravitational bodies that are being acted on by that gravitational force. And you can mix and match. You can have uh, objects that are both a source and getting acted on by other gravitational forces. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a gravitational manager. So I'm just gonna create an empty object and rename it gravity manager. I'm gonna add in a flow machine, then I'm gonna go into my macro folder and create a new flow macro. I'm gonna name this one gravity manager and drag and drop it into our flow machine on the gravity manager like so. Now what we're gonna do with our gravity manager is there's gonna be two lists. One is gonna be all the sources of gravity. The other one is going to be all the gravitational bodies, the objects that are actually having a gravitational force exerted on them. And I'm gonna do those two lists as graph variables. So what I'm gonna do is go down to my variables window and I'm gonna create a gravity source list. And the type is going to be a list of rigid bodies. And then I'm gonna create a second list, which is gravity bodies list. And we're gonna create a list of rigid bodies. So going full screen here, we're gonna to start to create the flow macro for our gravity manager. Now the way I'm gonna add objects to this list is objects themselves are gonna call a custom event and add themselves to this list. Now it's not the only way to do it. You could have these lists as scene variables, but I like to keep the scope of my variables as small as possible. So I'm gonna create a custom event and I'm gonna call this register gravity sources. And it's gonna have one incoming argument. That incoming argument is going to be the rigid body of that gravitational source. So what I'm gonna do is then drag in a reference to the gravity source list. And then I'm gonna add another unit, add item unit, and I'm gonna connect it like so. So that I'm adding to this gravitational, or this gravity source list, I'm adding the incoming rigid body. And then I'm gonna put a box around that just to keep things nice and tidy and organized. And then I'm gonna repeat the process, but in this time I'll be doing it with a gravity bodies list. So do you know that while this code looks very similar that I'm using different lists and different names to my events. And this is gonna allow the gravitational bodies and the gravitational sources to register themselves and add themselves to the gravity manager. So with that done, I'm gonna start creating the objects for the gravitational sources and the gravitational bodies. So I'm gonna create a new empty object. I'm gonna rename it gravity source. And then I'm gonna add a couple components to it. First one I'm gonna add is a rigid body and I need to make sure to toggle off gravity. While we're gonna be simulating gravity, we don't want the default gravity to be acting on this object, which is, by default is going to pull it down in the negative y direction, which is not what we want. We wanna be simulating our own gravitational force. So we wanna turn that off. Next, I'm gonna add in a flow machine, and then I'll create a new flow macro, and I'm gonna call it gravity source. And I'm gonna drag and drop that into the macro like so. And then in my planets pack folder, I'm gonna to go to the prefabs, I'm gonna grab the sun, and drop it in and create, a, create it as a child of our gravitational source. Now the only reason I'm doing that is we have some sort of visual as to where our gravitational source is, makes it a little bit easier to look at, a little bit easier to know what's going on. With all that done, I'm gonna drag the gravity source into a prefab folder to create a prefab out of it. Now the flow macro for the gravity source is pretty simple. All it needs to do is register itself with the gravity manager. So what we're gonna do is add in a start event, and then this is gonna trigger a custom event. Now I need the name of that custom event and I need to spell it correctly. So I'm gonna go back to my gravity manager. I'm gonna go over here to the register gravity sources. I'm gonna copy that string and come back and paste it in. Now we need to tell this trigger what object the event is on and that's the gravity manager. 
Now again, there's multiple ways to do that, but the way I like to do that is to create a new scene variable. I'm gonna call it gravity manager. It's gonna be of type game object, and I'm gonna drag the gravity manager into that slot. I'll then drag that variable out and connect it up to the object like so. Now this event has one argument or it's expecting one argument to come in. So we need to increment up the number of arguments in our trigger to one. And what we're gonna be sending through this event is the rigid body that's attached to this object. So I'm gonna right click, add a unit, and I'm gonna search for game object, get component. I'm gonna choose that option. The type that I want, we're gonna send the rigid body and I'm gonna send that component through it like so. And then I'm gonna add a box just to keep a label so we know what's going on. Next, I'm gonna create the gravitational body or the object that's gonna be acted on by gravity. So once again, I'm gonna go in and create an empty. I'm gonna rename it gravity body. I'm gonna add on to it a rigid body, turning off gravity, and I'm gonna add a flow machine. I'm then, then gonna go into prefabs and I'm gonna grab the earth, drop it in as a child, and then I'm gonna move it over in the scene view so we can see what's going on. Now the flow macro for this is very similar to the gravity source. We just need to register ourselves with a different list and a different event. So I'm gonna to go to my macro folder, select the gravity source. I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna change it to gravity body. I'm also gonna change my capitalization issue here, which seems to be a bad habit of mine. In the gravity body flow macro, what we need to do is simply change the name of the event that we're calling. We need to change this register gravity sources to register gravity bodies. So once again, I'm gonna go back to my gravity manager. I'm gonna copy and paste that event, come back to my gravity body and cut and paste like so. We're still sending it to the same object and we're still sending in the rigid body. Last thing we're gonna do is gonna go back up to the gravity body and drag and drop that flow macro into the flow machine and turn the gravity body into a prefab. Let's do a quick test and make sure this is working. So I'm gonna click on my gravity manager. I'm gonna to go to my graph variables so I can see my lists. And if I push play, you can see that both the gravity source and the gravity body have added themselves to the correct list. So it's all working as planned and as expected. Now, the first thing we're gonna do here with our gravity manager before we get to simulating the force is we need to do a little bit of bookkeeping. You may notice over here in my variables that in my list, the gravity source and the gravity body are still part of the list. And I don't know if this is a fluke with Bolt, if this is something I just don't quite understand, but that list, while we added to it during runtime, does not get cleared out when we back out of play mode. Unlike a lot of settings, when you set them in, in play mode or runtime, they are those settings are undone when you go out of play mode. That does not appear to happen with lists in Bolt. We're gonna create an on disable event, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drag in both these lists, like so, and I'm gonna add in a clear list unit. And I'm gonna duplicate that connect up each list and the flow like so. And what that's gonna do is when we go out of play mode, it's gonna clear both these lists and make it ready for the next time that we play. And just so I don't have to go into play mode and back out of play mode, I'm gonna remove both of these entries from the list so we're starting fresh like so. And then I'm gonna add a box around this code. Okay, with that done, we're now ready to actually get to simulating our gravitational force. And we're gonna be doing that with Newton's law of universal gravitation. And you can see that here on the Wikipedia page, what we have is this equation of F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Now F is just a gravitational force. G is this thing called the gravitational constant that we think is the same anywhere in the universe. M1 and M2 are just the masses of the two objects. And then R is the distance between the objects, as you can see in the image on the right. So what we need to be able to do is calculate all this for each source on each body. Now, if you just have one source and one body, this is pretty trivial, but potentially in your game, you may have multiple sources of gravity and multiple bodies going around. So what we're going to need to do is loop through all the gravitational bodies and then calculate the force of all the gravitational sources on that given body. And we're gonna do that with nested for each loops. I'm gonna scroll this up because we're gonna be doing a fair amount of work. I'm then gonna add in a fixed update event. Now the reason we wanna use fixed update is because we're dealing with the physics engine. Yes, we're not using the gravity in the physics engine, but we are still gonna be using the physics engine. We're going to be adding forces to the rigid body and letting the physics engine decide what the velocity and accelerations need to be. So as I said before, we're gonna to need to loop through all of our gravitational bodies and then loop through all the sources that are acting on each of those bodies. And we're gonna do that with for each loops. The first list that we're gonna loop through is the gravity bodies. And then I'm gonna duplicate that for each loop as we're gonna then loop through the gravitational sources. And you can see now that we're doing nested loops, if you get even 10, 20, 30, 40 objects in your scene, this can take quite a bit of time for every time that the fixed update needs to run. 
So the first thing that we're going to calculate is the product of the masses or M1 times M2. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to search for rigid body mass. I'm going to duplicate that because we need two masses. And the mass of the first object is going to be from the gravitational body. And the other mass is going to be from the source that is applying the gravitational force. We're then going to multiply these. I'm going to put a box around it and give it a little bit of color. Now, the next thing we need to do is calculate that R, or rather, we don't want to calculate the R, the distance between the objects. We want the distance between them squared. So I'm going to add in a transform position, get, and I'm going to duplicate that. And one of these positions is going to be from the gravitational body. The other one's going to be from the gravitational source. I'm then going to subtract these two vectors, and that's going to give me the vector between the two objects. I can then add in a square magnitude. Now you could do the magnitude, which would actually be the R value and then square it. But to get the R value, you have to do a square root. And so by using the square magnitude, I don't have to do that square root, which turns out to be pretty intensive for our processors. Now, the next thing that we're going to need is a gravitational constant. We need that big G. Now, this is something that you can vary in your game to control the effect or the size of your gravity force, which can affect how fast things move. If your G is really small, like it is in real life, the gravitational force is going to be very weak and it's going to result in very small velocities. So increasing that value of G is crucial if you want to have something that's interesting to look at and engaging to play with. So what I'm going to do is create a scene variable that is our gravitational constant. It's going to be of type float. And I'm just going to give it a value of one. That's really big. That's orders and orders of magnitude bigger than it is in real life. I'm then going to drag that in like so. And now I have most of the pieces that I need to start building my equation. I'm going to add a multiply block and we're going to multiply G by the product of our masses. We're going to take that thing and divide it by the distance between the two objects. Now on the surface, that looks like most of what we need to do. That's G, our two M's and our distance between them. But this is a vector. And so we need to have a direction to this force. We need to know which direction this force is going to be going. So what we need to do is take out here this vector here, which is the vector between the two objects and we're going to normalize it. Now, the reason we're normalizing it, that gives us a vector of length one that goes from the source to the body and tells us which direction the force needs to be applied. So I'm gonna add a couple boxes here to make things a little bit more clear. We then need to multiply this size here with the direction of the force. And now we actually have our gravitational force. The output of this multiply block is the actual gravitational force. But we need to do one more thing. When the distance between the body and the source goes to zero, which it can, or it can get really, really small, what ends up happening is our gravitational force goes essentially to infinite. And that's gonna cause problems with our simulation. It's gonna cause some odd behavior. So what we're gonna do is check the distance between these objects. And if it's greater than a certain value, then we're going to apply the force. If it's less than that value, we're not gonna apply a force at all. So I'm gonna scroll over here a little bit and I'm gonna pull out this value, which is the distance between them. And we're gonna check if it's greater, greater than 0.1. Now you can change that value depending on how accurate you want your simulation to be. I found that when I dropped that value smaller than that, I still got some weird spikes in the force and it wasn't quite realistic. If you're coming from a physics background, you're maybe asking, hey, why isn't that realistic? And it has to do with the discrete nature of computers. We're not calculating this force continuously. Our time value is not continuous. We're doing this at a fixed update rate, which causes some weird oddities and lack of smoothness. Now, again, this is gonna cause some lack of reality, a lack of realism, but frankly, we already had that anyways, and this is gonna create, in general, a better result. So I'm gonna drag that value out to a branch, and we're gonna connect that like so. Now, if this branch evaluates as true, we wanna add force to our rigid body. And the force that I wanna add is this value here. And now we need to tell which object to exert the force on. And that's way back here. That is the body here. We're gonna drag this all the way out and connect it like so. And there you go. That's what we need to simulate the gravitational force on our object. Let's go back to our scene view. And now what you can see, be it very slowly, the earth is accelerating towards the sun. It's going faster and faster and faster. And it'll now pass through the sun, through the other side, slow down and go back the other direction. Now, again, this isn't perfect. It's not exact, 
but we have the basics of gravitational interaction working with our planets. I'm going to make a few changes here to make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go to my gravity source. I'm going to up its mass. I'm going to increase the sun's mass to five. We can push play. And you can see now that we have a stronger gravitational attraction, the Earth's accelerating at a higher rate. And back and forth. Now, if you want to do things with gravitational orbits, we need to go one step further. Right now, these two objects are just attracting each other. If you want to go in a circular orbit or an elliptical orbit, you need to have some initial velocity. So I'm going to create a flow macro that sets an initial velocity that allow our gravitational bodies to move around and create more of an elliptical orbit. So I'm going to go to my flow macro. I'm going to right click, create, bolt, flow macro, and I'm going to call it initial velocity. I'm going to go up to my gravitational body. I'm going to add another flow machine. I'm going to drag that into it, and then I'm going to apply my prefab. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I want my velocity to be an object variable, and it's going to work a lot better, a lot smoother if that object is already a prefab. So I'm going to go up to my variables and create a variable called initial velocity, and it's going to be of type vector3. Then in my flow macro, we're going to create a start event, and we're going to drag that out and search for rigid body velocity, and we're going to set that velocity. I'm then going to drag my initial velocity in and connect it up like so. The reason I'm not just typing in the value into the rigid body velocity unit is so that I can type in or change the initial velocity in the inspector per prefab. Now, in order to go in a circle or at least something roughly circular, you need the acceleration, which is directed towards the sun, to be perpendicular to velocity. So in this case, I'm going to set the velocity to be in the positive z direction, which is towards the top of the screen. I'm going to go over to my z value. I'm going to set it to 1. I'm also going to go one step further and add in a trail renderer, which makes it a little more fun to look at. I'm going to increase the time from 5 to 30. And then I'm going to go into the materials and select a material. And I found it's not perfect, but it works pretty well. The default particle material. With those changes made, I'm going to go back up to my overrides and apply this to all my prefabs. Let's push play and see what happens. And you get what looks like to be a pretty nice circular orbit. So if we want to have a little bit more fun, we can duplicate our gravitational sources, we can duplicate our gravitational bodies, we can even mix and match the gravitational sources and bodies so that a single object is both exerting and receiving a gravitational force. You can see what we get is some playful, fun, and non-realistic behavior, but behavior that might be the basis of a fun game to play. So there you go. We've used Bolt Visual Scripting to simulate gravity and create the basis for what could be a fun game to play. So if you've enjoyed this video, or better yet, you found it useful, please think about hitting that subscribe or like buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Discord and Patreon pages. So until next time, happy game designing.